Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Carnegie Hall, whether you are here or at home. Uh, you will excuse, of course, my, I hope, uh, taking some exercise here because <laughs> I've been in New York for two days and they gave me a very small hotel room. <laughs> I put the key in the door and the window breaks. <laughs> so I have been tied down here with rehearsals and things. So this is a delight. We can't tell you how delighted we are to bring you this show from Carnegie Hall. Um, you know, so many things have happened in this hall. It's unbelievable. Uh, there's a book out which tells you all about Carnegie Hall. Uh, I would like to read to you some of the... the babies have been born in here at times that are most... <laughs> uh, and where's the book? Let me have the book, please. This is, by the way, a very informal show, and we certainly hope you will understand the things that happen. No, we just want to entertain you, and we hope you will. Uh, where's the book? <laughs> the book? Oh, there's the stage hand. Thank you very much. <laughs> I told you it was going to be informal. <laughs> See, he has lost my mark now and it... It is most interesting, for instance, there three weddings have taken place here during concerts. <laughs> here it is on page five. <laughs> page six, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but it is page six and not page five, that's what it is. I mean, there's no reason to get excited about it. Do you care which page it is? <laughs> I can assure you I have not the slightest regret. So what is different, page five and page six? Is there any reason to be mentally disturbed because it is page six? <laughs> and not page five, I think it is really We apologize for everything in our life, every day. We Stumble, we apologize, we step on somebody, we push somebody, we apologize, we sneeze, we cough, we apologize. A little uh, hiccup, you know, uh, we apologize, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just to attract attention so everybody know who did it. <laughs> so, let us forget about the embarrassment and just say that it's page six and not page five. I will admit, had it been page nine, I probably would have been out of my mind. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Page nine. <laughs> I've decided this time to play a lot of music because I've always been requested to do so. Uh, tonight, I'm going to choose the number for which I've had the least requests. the song they called Because. And this is the one I would like to play for you right now, Because. Uh, how does it go now? <laughs> Who knows? Because. <laughs> Thank you, madam. <laughs> well, that was it. Now, uh, Oh, let me tell you what happened to me this afternoon. I was driving down from the country in my beautiful 64 Grand Prix. And that's the personal sports car that outsells all the others in its field, I'm told. Well, I came to one of those toll gates where you simply throw your money in and proceed. Of course, I didn't have the exact change. And I've always wondered what would happen if you just keep going. Which is exactly what I did. The moral of the story is, when you pass a toll gate, do as you are told.
Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to introduce my good friend and traveling companion, one of America's foremost pianists of today, and I hope for the rest of the season, of course. <laughs> He's the official pianist with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, Mr. Leonid Hambro. I'd like to play the uh, overture to the Flitter Mouse by Joe Strauss. <laughs> Thank you. 
what, may I ask, were you playing? <laughs> well, since you didn't care for that one, you should try once more with uh, another one. We will play... Oh, thank you. Play a prelude by Rachmanina. Uh, uh, Sergei, uh, Sergei Rachmanina. Pardon? Would you be kind enough to use both lips? I am not a one lip reader. <laughs> oh, which one? That's a good question. Which one? Uh, he has written 24 preludes. We'll play one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, play the one you like. <laughs> I know which one I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is. Uh, the G minor. <laughs> All right, the G minor prelude by Rachmaninoff, and I played in B flat. know the beginning of that one? <laughs> Let us play the theme from the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto. That's the one that's always requested, unfortunately. The, what's the name of that concerto? The B flat. The, what, the B flat. B flat. Why do they call it B flat? Well, it begins in B flat minor, ends in B flat major. It, so it begins in minor and ends in major. That's what we call it B flat. <laughs> they give these things the strangest names. <laughs> then again, Tchaikovsky is not an easy name. <laughs> All right, then. Your hugs are going. Uh, do you do that? Sure. That. How come you suggested that one? <laughs> do you know anything else? gentlemen, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with the performance. The only thing is that, have you ever thought of how a fly lands in the ceiling? This way or that? Does it turn just before it hits the ceiling? Or... <laughs> well, it's... I am not particularly interested. The only thing is that this is what ruined my concert career, you see, because in the middle of a cadence, I would start thinking of things like, how does a fly land in the ceiling? <laughs> It is an interesting observation. Does it do like this and turn and then go like that? And not enough with that. How does it get off again? Like this, zoom and turn. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nah, well, never mind. Could be interesting to know it, of course. Well, why don't you play it?
told you not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a little embarrassing. I shall now save the situation by going straight to the cadenza. <laughs> I haven't been near a cadenza for years. <laughs> Enjoy it. Let me play, please. It's my show. <laughs> Cadenza. How was it again? <laughs> I got it. I got it. I think I'm stupid. I remember very well. Accompanied Melchior, uh, <laughs> Perry Como, and uh, it, it would be a great honor to. A what? To An honor? honor, 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 honor. <laughs> it would be a, a great, a great honor to play. You know, to sing for you. I wanted to play actually. Would you make up your mind what do you wanted to play? I think. I think sing. <laughs> All right. So that's the way you feel about it. I'm delighted. <laughs> and what would you like to sing in this case? Uh, it's now or never. It's what? It's now or never. It's now or never. It's now or never. Right. It's now or never. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, I need a, a, a page turner. Will you please bring? <clears throat> I don't care what you look like. Just. <laughs> you again, huh? <laughs> Seems that we are. Uh, all you do is turn when I not. When when I do not not don't turn. 
Understand? It's now, Miss. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> I got never here. Where's now? <laughs> It won't be now if you don't get ever. <laughs> there it is. Can you read? Hmm. All right. Pronto. I once had a dog called Pronto. Woo <laughs> <laughs> woo! Do you know how I fly, Lance? Oh. Get it. Start down here, so be ready to. Stand by for a message from Washington. <laughs> Stand 
stay tuned for the Victor Borges show. It's the swingingest. <laughs> now, would I lie to you? <laughs> the Pontiac Star Parade. Brought to you by Pontiac and your authorized Pontiac dealer who proudly sell the beautiful 59 Pontiac, America's number one road car with exclusive wide track wheels for the most beautiful roadability ever. Presenting for November, the fourth path of Victor Borga's comedy and music. But that, of course, is a, is a... Oh, I'm going to read something to you now from this book. But before I go into it, I must explain to you a few things. Uh, a little story... I have to find it first, because we're not very, very well prepared. <laughs> here it is, here it is. On page seven. <laughs> Sorry, page eight. <laughs> Matter of fact, these numbers are so close together. Seventy-eight. That's what. <laughs> One hundred and seventy-eight. <laughs> you know, my children—they always fool around with my books. They change the pages, tear them up. We have five children at home. A lot of children. Five children. The most difficult thing with five children is finding names for them. <laughs> we have Danish names for our children. Very short, precise. One of them, for instance, is uh, the little boy, he's, he's uh, four years old. <laughs> the reason I couldn't remember, he used to be three. You know? <laughs> <laughs> his, uh, his name is... Uh, uh, <laughs> I've spoken to him so often. <laughs> Save it! <laughs> oh, that's my neighbor's little girl. <laughs> I, well, I recognize him when I see him. Just a moment, I want to write a note to my wife here. No more children. <laughs> Find Mr. Borger, <laughs> senior. That's the name of the kid, Junior! <laughs> Often one wonders what inspired the great composers to these beautiful pieces of music they wrote. A friend of mine once told me how Beethoven was inspired to one of the most famous of his compositions. And it took place like this. Beethoven had a pupil who played the violin. And during one of his lessons, Beethoven said to him, Now, my boy, you play exactly after me what I play. You play the same thing. I play this. <laughs> you play the same thing. <laughs> the rest, of course, is history. <laughs> this became the symphony that won the war. <laughs> there was a famous composer by the name of De Lee. And he was in love with a young ballerina who suffered from hiccups. <laughs> Every time she danced, she destroyed the whole beauty of the dancing by hiccuping, and her career was ruined. So he composed for her a piece of music to which she could dance and hiccup at the same time, and nobody would notice. <laughs> cousin of mine in Denmark um, once wrote, by the way, this was one of my cousins we had very much trouble with because he once took a pill that makes you look 15 years younger and that almost killed him because he was 
Only 12, but he didn't. <laughs> he wrote this. Now, these two notes are very, very important because if he hadn't written this, we should never have had this. <laughs> then there was the famous composer, Puro. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, when this ovation has died down, <laughs> I'm happy to say that I'm the one who stopped it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the composer who wrote uh, one of the uh, later dance tunes was inspired by composing and at the same time eating at the piano. He always had something sitting, uh, spaghetti and things like all the greasy stuff. And every time his elbows slid down, he had the beginning of something here. And I'll show you what he composed this way. <laughs> I had uh, uh, something by Tchaikovsky, I can't think of it right now. You know, Tchaikovsky was the composer, was born in 1840. He had lived a rather obscure life until 1958, when a Texan uh, discovered him. <laughs> <laughs> Johann Strauss was eating cherries, and when he spit out the pits, he was inspired to the Blue Daniel. had invited some guests over for the evening. He had, prior to the time the guests were supposed to arrive, been sitting for hours and hours at the piano. He just couldn't get inspired. He had been sitting and sitting and sitting, and he finally almost gave up. He was just sitting, noodling, uh, uh, sitting like this.
Sherman, last show I did, I introduced a prodigy. It's my pleasure again to introduce a prodigy in this show. Mr. Jimmy Mahoney, one of my pupils. Mr. <laughs> What are you playing, Jimmy? Play the beautiful Blue Daniel. The beautiful Blue Daniel. As you wish. new gallery of television portraits of colorful geniuses and historic figures of a century ago. We take you to the home of the eminent Hungarian composer Franz Liszt. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, I have been chased by beautiful women in every country. The terrible price the artist has to pay for the art. <laughs> I've played all over the world. Piano, of course. <laughs> Is the lady whom I see in the love seat beside you, uh, Mrs. Liszt, by any chance? The lady you see beside me in the love seat is not Mrs. Liszt, and she hasn't got a chance. <laughs> uh, let's just say that she's an old friend and dropped the subject. <laughs> I haven't. But I met Joe Green yesterday on the street, and this is very interesting. Joe Green? Yes, Joe Green. Oh, you mean, you mean Giuseppe Verdi? Oh, that's his stage name. <laughs> <laughs> we met, and he suggested something about Aida. I don't even know her. No, I wasn't interested in anything like that. Well, you might be interested to know, Mr. List, that uh, there is now a movie in our country based on your life. Is that so? Yeah. What's the name of that? Uh, it's called... 
Song Without End. It covers your entire brilliant career. And you certainly did have a brilliant career. Yes, except for that very, very bad year, 1887. Well, what happened in 1887? I died. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear That's that. That's life. Mm. <laughs> but you certainly did have a brilliant life. All, all of those triumphs. <laughs> As the flower of the musical oh, world, oh, Mr. Oh. Liss, with all of that adulation, I'm amazed that your success hasn't gone to your head. Well, I'll tell you... <laughs> Excuse me just a second. I'm a chain sniffer. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, I have, in my youth, been very conceited. As a matter of fact, I was always very conceited. That has all changed now. Now I'm perfect. <laughs> And it's surprising how you still manage to retain your modesty, sir. <coughs> you, uh, you played for royalty many times, did you not, Mr. List? Yes, I did. But, uh, oh, kings, queens, jacks, <laughs> counts, countesses, and so But they seem to, well, they don't understand my music. But the food is good. <laughs> well, if they don't understand your music, why do you play for royalty? Because I get five extra points when I take a civil service examination. <laughs> What is your unbiased opinion, sir, about your contemporary composers? Have you, for instance, heard Johann Strauss' Tales of the Vienna Woods? No, but I heard a cute one about a musician's daughter. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Uh, what do you think of Brahms? Who? Johannes Brahms. Oh, Joe Brahms? The fellow from, uh, from Hamburg? <laughs> He writes for babies. <laughs> what do you expect from a hamburger? <laughs> Chopin? Well, he used to be a good friend of mine, but he got in with a bad crowd. <laughs> he was running around with this woman. What was her name? Uh, uh, what was her name? George? <laughs> Are you trying to be funny, maybe? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but her name was George. You're sick! <laughs> George Sand. George Sand. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, I apologize, of course. The one who smoked my cigar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, the only thing he wrote that ever came in handy was the minute was. Because I happen to use it every morning. Before breakfast, I push my piano out in the kitchen. And then I... Play the minute walls three times, and my eggs are done. <laughs> well, I uh, think, sir, that perhaps you're losing interest in this turn in the conversation. Perhaps we'd better go back to talking about you. Now you're wising up. <laughs> Mr. List, I know that our audience would never forgive me if I didn't ask you to play something before we leave you. Would you do us that honor? Well, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> I would be delighted, Mr. Wallace. You... Probably know where my Hungarian Rhapsody is, number one, number three, four, five, six. Uh, well, I just wrote the second one, number two. <laughs> a little behind with that one, but nevertheless, I should play that for you, maybe. Will you play us a little of it? No. Nope. I'll play it all. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, isn't this a gorgeous hand? Absolutely gorgeous. Another one like it. <laughs> Through these fingers has the most beautiful music walked in the world. Walked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot play this one alone. It was written for four hands, because that way we go through with it a little faster. <laughs> but my prize pupil, Mr. Leonid Hambro, is waiting in the waiting room. So maybe I should call him in and he will help me out. I am sure he... Will be delighted. Mr. Hambro, would you please come in? My prize pupil, Mr. Hambro. <laughs> the 
second. The lousy one, you know. <laughs> Ready? Let me see. Maybe we will see each other soon in my balloon. <laughs> 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 